So, so this all sounds really good, and I'm wondering if we can land it for folks who are watching. Um, maybe with a practical exercise that they can do right here and right now to apply foresight. Say I am a minister or a community organizer. So I have like these strong convictions, these experiences that I've had with, with God or with the, you know, the, the tide of the universe turning toward justice. I'm a storyteller. I'm telling the stories that have come down to me that are super meaningful, that have directly impacted my life. You know, the, the gospel story, the story of the beloved community. And at the same time, I'm experiencing a number of challenges. Um, number one is my own personal sense of overwhelm or burnout. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is wanting my community to stay together and to stay grounded during this time of upheaval. Yeah. And number three is letting the wider community know that I exist, that these services exist, that this community exists, that they can come and be a part of. Is there an exercise or something that can help us be not just reactionary with those three needs, but actually um, anticipatory in a way that makes us resilient and generative? Yeah, so there is, um, so what's interesting about that is that the difficult thing to do just right here now, as you and I have talked before off camera, is to say, well, what is my preferred future? And then how do I just go sit there and then look back at it? Mm -hmm. And as you and I talked about the difficulty with, with trying to tell somebody, well, just envision what, uh, what kind of future you want, is that when they do that, they're envisioning a future from the present day. And I know some of the reactions will be, duh, what other <laughs> Where else are we going to do it, right? <laughs> so this is something I, I refer to as a perceptual location. Right, and I'm still pretty sure I made that up. So I'm gonna perceptual go location. Perceptual please location. tell us. It is the place in time where you are making your decisions from. Okay. So some people make it from the past, right? Well, I'm holding on to this back here. Others make it from uh, the present. You know, like well, uh, you know, and that's highly reactionary. Mm -hmm. And then others sometimes will be like, well, it's all about the future, and they're not paying attention to either of these, but they don't have a real clear picture of this out here. So with the limited time that we have here, and obviously without having somebody work through an exercise that's foresight specific, I think something that could be really practical and valuable is something that I've done with clients, I've done with this with teams, uh, it's, it's just about making it very personal. And so all this comes back to what you were asking, because everybody who's watching this, who's listening to this, is going to have a different issue that they're dealing with. Maybe it is trying to attract more people. Maybe it is, uh, you know... Uh, trying to grow the community, make a bigger impact, whatever that might be. But before you can do that, if you're trying to avoid burnout, if you're trying to avoid uh, this overwhelm, uh, we really have to get clear and aware of what's driving us and what is influencing our decisions. You see, burnout and overwhelm, what I've found is that most of it is rooted in the fact that we are spending our time and our energy on things that in the long run are not even gonna be important to us. Mm. That's in every, it doesn't matter if you're in a faith community or not, but we're spending our time and our energy on things that we're being told we should make important. But at the end of our life, are we gonna look back and go, oh yeah, I'm so glad I did that. What I found in, in doing this exercise, which I'll show you here, is that for the most people are like, no, that's not mm. at all what I found to be valuable. Mm. And so I want you to think of it like this. So this is foresight related, but this is much more personal. Uh, think of your entire life as an organization, right? Uh, every part of that organization, of who you are as a person, must be working together towards a common vision. So when I say think of your life as an organization, think of, of the different roles you play in your life as departments. So I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a musician, cyclist, business owner, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Almost think of these as these are the different partment, compartments or departments inside of your organization, which is you. And then what I tell people to do is identify what those are first, because some of us don't even really know. We don't really consider them as being a separate thing. But oftentimes people's overwhelm and stress comes from my role as a business owner is conflicting with what I believe I should be doing to be a good parent or mm -hmm. a good husband, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so when you have all that internal conflict going on, there's no way you can really move forward and help other people or inspire other people to move forward with you until you fix that part first. Yeah. 
Yeah, when, as you're saying that, I, I remind, I'm reminded of a metaphor that will be familiar to a lot of us. It's our body as a temple. Yeah. Like if I think of my body as a temple, you know, sometimes that just has like health implications. But I even think of like the different parts of, of a temple, the outer court, the inner court, the holy of holies. How are my grounds in good repair or, mm -hmm. or are things, you know, sort of decaying perfect. In, in my being? Yeah, no, I think that's, that's a perfect picture of it. Everything has to be working together. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it just ends up falling apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I tell, so when you identify what those are, I mean, really simple. How are you defined? What defines your life? Where do you spend your time and energy? Look at those things, and then imagine yourself twenty years into the future, right? Now this is the important part. You don't have to know what emerging trends and issues and AI and some of the other stuff that we've talked about. You don't have to know what all that is because that's not what this exercise is for. This exercise okay. is about you identifying for yourself what is most important because overwhelm. All of that stuff comes from us focusing on our, our attention on things that truly are not that important. Hmm. We are reacting constantly. So if we can remove ourselves from the present day and the chaos of the day, now we can get a little bit more clear about what's truly important. And here's how you do that. You envision those different parts of your life and use this exact language. Because you're 20 years in the future and you are writing back to somebody, not yourself, to somebody somebody you care about. Think of, you know, maybe it's a child, maybe it's a grandchild, uh, you know, maybe it's a friend, it doesn't matter, but somebody who you truly care about and you want to tell your story, and you're telling your story about what it is that you are most proud of. But the way you do that is this. You use this exact language. As a father, I am proud of the fact that. The key here, though, is remembering you are in the future. Not, I'm proud of the fact that I hope one day I will. No, no, no. Then you're in the present. Mm -hmm. It's looking back. Mm -hmm. Think of it this way. Where we are right now, if you think back over the past, how many years have we been? We've known each other almost two decades? Yeah. Man, we are old. I know. Yeah. Just about 20 but years. You think about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. what, you know, what is something that you were proud of that had a, a, you know, that really made the difference in your life, whether it's good or bad. It doesn't always have to be roses and sunshine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It could be something that was hard, but you made it through. Like, what is it you're really proud of? Mm -hmm. Like, and in what department? You, you're a father, you're a husband, you're a writer, you're, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, Mike is many things, but you know, what, uh, what, uh -huh. give me an example. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, how about as, as a writer? As a writer, 10 mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. So it was 2019, so 2009. Mm -hmm. Between 2009 and 2019, what, as mm -hmm. a writer, mm -hmm. are you really proud of that was like momentous for you, that really changed the game? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, one obvious milestone is that I got to uh, collaborate on writing a book with a hero of mine, with, with Richard Rohr. Yeah. And I got to write The Divine Dance. So, so in, this, in this way of uh, iterating the exercise, if I was right now writing to my, my past self, Oh, it was not impressive. Not just a you're writing to maybe it's maybe one of your kids. Okay. Or your right. grandkids. Right. You don't have any of it. Yeah. Yes, I mm -hmm. don't have any grandkids yet. Knock on wood. <laughs> uh, and so then I would I would be sharing this. So if I'm so if I'm imagining myself then twenty years in the future, writing about what I'm most proud of, I'm taking sort of artistic liberties with imagining what Absolutely. I've accomplished. Very, yeah. very uh -huh. artistic. Uh-huh. Very, uh, a lot of liberties, yes. Yes, okay, mm -hmm. got it. So I, I'm, I'm feeling free to say, you know, as, as a minister, as a parent, as a friend, yeah. uh, here's what I'm so happy that, that I was able to accomplish. That's exactly right. That, that I'm, I'm so happy that my congregation was able to contribute to this, you know, practical permaculture initiative that happened all over the country that sequestered carbon in the soil so that we've actually turned the tide on climate change. <laughs> You know, so great. Something, something like bar, that. Really hard. <laughs> no know, pressure. It doesn't have to be that. You know, <laughs> right, right. This really needs to be personal, but that's a great yeah, example. Yeah. You, know, you thinking back 10 years ago, that's yeah. tangible. You can touch it. Now, yeah. let me ask you this. When you think about the fact that you wrote a book with Richard Rohr, mm -hmm. which is very cool, uh, you know, you do you remember the person who cut you off in traffic? Do you remember the mm -hmm. email that somebody had written to you and, mm -hmm. and it just ugh, it frustrated you? And mm -hmm. It's the little things that drive us crazy. Yeah. That's what we focus on, right? Yeah. But you don't remember what those were mm -hmm. because they're not important. Mm -hmm. So the problem right now is if I were to say, hey, just envision what your ideal future is and like put yourself there, right. what are we going to do? We're going to envision the things that have stressed us out today, mm -hmm. stupid little things that in the long run we're not going to care about, and that's how it clouds the vision. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of this is now 
you know, first start with an exercise and say, hey, do a 10 year look back from where you are today. Say like what Mike just did, mm -hmm. you know, as a father, as a mother, as mm -hmm. a husband, whatever mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. just to get the engine revved. Okay. And then sit and say, now I'm going to do this. I'm going to put myself 20 years into the future. Got it. Because when you do that, there's none of those, those little small things that trip us up day by day. It's, it's similar to the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, what's the exercise, you know, the, uh, I'm totally blanking out here. At the end of your life, you're uh, um, <laughs> on your deathbed. No, it's in the um, it's what they your obituary. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. <laughs> so what is this word? <laughs> the obituary exercise. Other uh -huh. people have done this before. Mm -hmm. the thing I'd, I've never liked about that is that with an obituary exercise, you can't go I mean, you're, you can't go back and change it. The difference here is, is that you haven't right gone there yet. So that's what this exercise is for. So yeah, getting back to this here, mm -hmm. um, put yourself in that twenty years. 10 years, whatever you want, and look back and just free write. Let that creativity, mm -hmm. that artistic liberty, just let it flow. Mm -hmm. As a father, I'm proud of the fact that when I did this exercise for myself before I introduced it to clients, I was proud of the fact that you know, uh, my kids, I had this whole thing that I started writing about my kids. Mm -hmm. I only had one at the time, but I was talking about both of them, mm -hmm. right? Now we have two. Wow. So you start to, what ends up happening, I can just tell you is this, and I don't want to put too much of what will happen because it really is a personal, intimate experience. What ends up happening is that you start to see, realize the things that, uh, that are buried deep down, that we've allowed to just be mm. you know, pushed down. Those things start coming to the surface because you're in a state of reflection, not a state of projection. And when yeah. you're in that state of reflection, you can really start to get clear on, this is what's important as a dad. Am I going to be excited that, you know, uh, I didn't do this or that I spent more time doing this, you know, I, or am I really proud of the fact that I decided to go in this direction and spend more time with my kids and shut things down at the end of the day, mm -hmm. whatever it might be, yeah. but, but tell the story and just, but you have to use that language as a father, mother, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of the fact that, mm -hmm. and then as soon as you run out of those, move on to the next. Mm. So you're saying do that in multiple areas of, of, of our lives. Absolutely, because what okay. you start to find is that there's a common thread throughout all of them. Mm -hmm. When you can identify what you are proud of in each of those areas of your life, one of two things happens, or sometimes both, really. One is, is that you're going to quickly see the things that you're putting your time and your energy into that you don't really value. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of those. Mm -hmm. The other is, is that you can start to really get clear on what it is um, that you want your legacy to be. And when you can have a clear vision of that, you don't necessarily need to know how the future is unfolding for that. Mm -hmm. This is about you understanding what is your purpose, what is your legacy. Because if you can get clear on that, everything else you know, starts to fall into place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing how that can happen when I'm, when I'm clear on, on my vision, when I'm clear on what is important. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it kind of takes care of itself. But, but getting to that place of clarity beyond the minutia that hangs me up, that is, that is the trick. Yeah. Um, and so, so let me see if I can, I can recap and understand what you're suggesting to us. Sure. So, so step one is to sort of to prime the pump. I might write a letter to someone in my own past, 10 years in my past. Well, the step one is to identify the different departments of your life. Think Got of it. yourself like a pie chart. Okay. Chop it up. So, okay, cool. I sort of, so the see, roles you see the roles that I play in my life. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, yes, I'm, I'm a, I'm a partner, I'm a parent, I am a writer, I am a friend, mm -hmm. uh, those, those arenas, and then maybe write a few letters to my past. So I'm already the, the narrator of, of this current moment being, you know, the future of 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and write, maybe write a few of those things to kind of get the, um, the pump primed. Yeah. Once I've done that, then place myself 20 years in the future and do the same thing, but without the constraints of what's actually happened. Right. In this case, I'm, I'm letting my imagination run wild to get clear about what my innermost values are and how those would, would play out. What are the, the triumphs I've experienced? What are the maybe painful lessons that I've, I've uh, lived through that have taught me yeah. certain things? Yeah, Okay. that's exactly right. Okay, and, then, and that hopefully, with, without getting too prescriptive, will have the impact of really clarifying to me what matters and what doesn't. Because clearly, insurance, selling insurance did not matter to you. Uh, <laughs> but the people matter to me. Uh -huh. right? It's that, you know, those are the things. But yeah, it was, I had to get clear on why I moved into that field. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for me now, and I have to still go back and do this exercise that I was just saying, because things mm -hmm. change. Right? Mm -hmm. You may even identify departments or things in your life, things that 
you'll eventually be proud of that don't exist right now. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. I had one lady who was a part of this organization who was planning to retire in, I think it was maybe six years from that time point. And when we went through this exercise, she you know, wrote this elaborate thing about how she and her husband had, had uh, sold their house, got a food truck, you know, and, and did something. I mean, it was very detailed. She's like, I've never thought about doing that before. Hmm. She retired three years early. Wow. And she started doing it and it was like, wow. Awesome, but she was thrilled, she was excited. That can unlock so much potential. It really can. You know, I'm thinking about this, not to put you on the spot here, but this, I mean, it may make sense, and we'll just see, you uh -huh. know, to run, because this really is like a multi-day retreat that I've done with folks, and maybe you, that's mm -hmm. something that we can do if you have folks that can yeah, dive into this. Yeah, that could be fun. But start there. I, I mean, just identify the departments of your mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. look at it like that, and then just get into a quiet place, prime the pump by reflecting back, just so you're like, oh, so it's like this. Here's the things that have actually happened. Here's what I'm most proud of. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you're not going to be, oh, uh, one of the most impactful things in my life was that email that I got that, you know, Sally sent and it really bummed me out. No, <laughs> you don't even remember it. <laughs> but you remember that moment of transition, that moment of impact. Yeah. Put yourself in the future and then remember those moments of impact mm -hmm. and you will start to get really clear on what's most important. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then, then we just have to, it's kind of like that that metaphor of, of how you you know carve the Michelangelo or, or carve the, the David out of a slab of marble. You just chip away everything that's not that. Yeah. So then it's the, then it's the process of letting go of those things that are not my primary reason for being, but that I feel I feel stuck with in the moment, or I feel sad yeah. with in the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. I still have to go back and do it. Mm -hmm. um, I I need tons of work. <laughs> well, yes, I know. Yeah, you've known me for so long. <laughs> so, yeah, As do I. <laughs> that's what that is. But, you know, bring it all back to foresight and thinking about, again, this, this ties in with everything else. It's, uh, it's about how you think, not what you think. So much of, of, of what we do is limited based on what, what it is that we've known already or what we've experienced. But if we can learn to think differently about the future then the opportunities to make a larger impact in the lives of the people you serve, in your community, wherever it may be that you're focused on, mm -hmm. that just just expands in an insane way. Mm -hmm. uh, because so many people are afraid to move forward because they don't know where they're going because they're waiting for somebody else to tell them what it's okay to do. But we are living in the most amazing time in human history. Mm -hmm. What do you have to lose? Don't squander that on some other guy or someone else or you know something else's idea of what your potential and your future could be. But the first place to start is, you know, recognize that. Identify what's really important to you. Mm. And then everything else from there. Standing in that place of wonder and open open uh, possibility. Yeah. And kind of kind of looking back from there. Well so suppose Suppose someone, you know, does this exercise and it's like, wow, this starts to free some stuff up, but I still need to know how to implement this. And I still need to know, maybe I don't just need to know for me, but I really want to start thinking about this on an organizational level. Mm -hmm. What is, what's the next step folks can take if they really want to dive into um, a foresight mindset and foresight habits and a foresight toolkit to really improve their ministries, to improve their vocations and the communities that they're working with?